Hi, my lovelies. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are having a fabulous day. As you can see from the title, we are going to be talking about Shania's open house for preschool. For those who don't know, Shania is my daughter and she is two going on three. So she's in early preschool. Actually, the school calls it um, EPK, which is Early Universal Pre-Kindergarten Program. So she's two going into three and um she's starting preschool <laughs> i'm excited i'm nervous i got so many emotions so many things to go through with you guys and tell you about open house so open house was today from 4 to 5 30. so when me and my husband we got there about 4 13 and we went in and we checked in with the lady at the front desk who has who i've been talking to for a few weeks now um and she asked her nice name um, she highlighted her name. She asked her what was her age as well. And she told us that her classroom was the learning ladybugs classroom. And it was down the hall to the left. We got to the classroom and we met the teacher. Her name was Miss Donna. And there, there's also a teaching assistant whose name was Miss Jada, but she was not um, in the classroom at the time. She had some, some things she had going on. So she wasn't there today, but she'll be there on Wednesday. So, um, w when we got in, Miss Donna had, um, packets laid out on the table for parents to, you know, do the paperwork. Look, this was the paperwork I had to fill out. There was a lot of paperwork in that packet. So when I got in there, there was already, um, a couple with their child there. And there were some other kids in the classroom, I guess, from their program that they had for the summer. Um, and their parents didn't come pick them up yet. So I started to get ready with the paperwork. My husband actually knew Miss Donna. So they started um, talking. He actually knew three of the staff members that was there because some of them work for RCSD. My husband is a teacher in RCSD. So he knew. So they were talking and I just started filling out paperwork. Now, some of this was already filled out because the lady at the front desk had already gave me this because they needed the immunization for the child and they needed my doctor to sign. So I had half of it filled out and then I just filled out the other half and I gave the paper for um, the immunizations and the shots and all that kind of stuff. So while I was doing that, Shania was browsing around the classroom, playing with the toys, this, that, and the third. I think I have a video of a little bit of what the classroom looks like, and I'll try to put it in here for you guys so you can see. Um, it's, it's set up for a preschool classroom. So I did the paperwork, and after I did the paperwork, um, inside of the, the folder, there were also um, their daily routine which look at this lovelies this looks long <laughs> so i'm just gonna skim through it for you guys um they have greeting time and breakfast after that is outside gross motor time then they have greeting time again then they have large group time then they have small group time then they have planning time work time cleanup time recall time small group time lunch time quiet and rest um, planning time, work time, cleanup time, recall, and dismissal. So for those who don't know, her preschool is six hours. It's from 8.30 to 2.30. When I was growing up, preschool was only like two to three hours for a couple of days. But her preschool is 8.30 to 2.30, Monday through Friday. So this is going to be like crazy for me to be gone from her for so long because I've been a stay-at-home mom for so long. Um, so for me to be gone from her for that amount of time is going to be like a little nerve wracking. So, um, and I seen there, this was posted outside on their bulletin board. You guys, they already had her name on the bulletin board about who's here. Um, and she has the shovel. I'm going to put a picture of it. And she also has, um, cause after I did the paperwork, she was allowed to pick out her cubby and Shania had no interest. And picking out her cubby. So I ended up picking up one for her. And they took a little sticky and it had her name. And it said Shania with the shovel. It was cute. I liked it. And then in there was um, this book bag for them. Um, this is Universal Pre-K. It has RCSD. And then inside the book bag, 
there's like so much stuff in here you guys there is um two packs of crayon there's tie dye there's glue sticks there's pencils um there's paint um there is scissors there is i don't even know some of the stuff magic mold construction paper um regular paper so it's a kit with a lot of different things so this was in her cubby and she got to pick out her cubby and they put her name um on that area and i will insert it in here so you guys can see um that um so after she picked out her cubby i'm sorry one second after she picked out her cubby um there's a scavenger hunt let me see if i got it in here for you guys um scavenger hunt yep so it's the learning ladybugs classroom scavenger hunt and it was just a quick one it wasn't quick for us to do because shania had no interest in doing it but mind you she is two turning three so she won't be three until november 29th which is really the end of november so a lot of the kids in there um there's 14 kids in the class but a lot of the kids in there are already three. There's only a few that's turning two, turning three. So that was a little concerning to me because some of the kids were bigger than her. Shania is on the smaller side, um, but I'll get into that later. Even though she's smaller, she's tough. So um, she had no interest. So the questions were, can you locate your letter link with your name? Um, once you and your child have found their letter link, please place it in a cubby of your child's choosing there, this will be the cubby for the remaining of the school year so that's what we're supposed to do um then they ask can you locate a place to wash your hands um which there's a place there if you need to tinkle or dump where do you go can you locate an area where you can build a structure can you locate an area where you can cook a meal can you locate an area for quiet reading an area for creativity and can you find a living thing in the classroom so i just wanted to show you guys it i did end up answering all the questions trying to show shania she had no interest you know she had literally no interest in it um but i know she was overstimulated i believe by all the other things that was going around um there was about five other parents that came in with their um children um while we were there but the teacher said that the classes of 14, up to 14 kids, but only 12 are coming. So that's a pretty big class size to me, per se. Um, but um, there are two teachers in the classroom. So, but not all 12 showed up. I've only seen five parents because I was there from 4.13 to like 5.30 because I was asking her so many questions, um, which some of the questions I asked them was about COVID, their protocol for that. So she told me when they come in, they take their temperatures, um, see if they have any bruises or anything like that, she said. And then she writes everything down. So as soon as they come in, they'll check their temperature, know if they have COVID or not. She said, to be honest, they wouldn't even be in the building if they did have COVID because of our protocols. I asked her about outdoor time and she said, which was 9 to 9.45 in the morning, that's when they'll be outside. Um, I asked about birthdays. Um, and I asked, are we allowed to bring, you know, food, snacks to celebrate? And she told me yes. And, and, how, but it would only it would have to be at two o'clock, which is the end of the day. Um, I also asked about what does a typical day look like? That's when we went through the routine. I asked about, what did I ask? Um, I have it written down on my phone. All I asked about, um, Fire drills. I asked about fire drills, if they do fire drills and stuff like that. Um, I asked, I can't even remember, lovelies. I asked so many different things, you know. Oh, where were they going to be sleeping? So she showed me this cot that they're going to be sleeping on. So in another video, I'm going to show you what I got Shania because she said about blankets and stuff like that. And what did they need? So I have the paper here for you guys. Um, what they need is um, a blanket for rest time, but I have Shania uh, a blanket with a pillow type thing. I'll show you guys in the next video what it is. 
Um, they need to change the clothes. And she said it has to be socks, shoes, pants, shirt, and underwear. Pull-ups if necessary. And Shania is not fully potty trained, so we will have pull-ups. They need a water bottle. And she said they need a backpack every day. And it says, please make sure your child's first and last name are on all the items that you bring for them. You will need two sets of clothing to keep at school. So I'm going to make sure I have all these things. I already have some of them already, to be honest. Um, I already have some of them already. So I'm not really worried about it. Um, I just didn't know we need two sets, but I'll make sure I have all that stuff for her. That's not going to be a problem. And then in the folder was also welcome to early um early pre-k which is epk um epk is what they call it and then it gives a brief not a brief but it talks about what epk is then it talks about who are the teachers and it gives a quick two paragraphs about each of the teachers that are going to be in the classroom which i found very helpful just to to know about the teachers and stuff like that and then it has our classroom uses high scope curriculum. So it talks about the different curriculum and approaches that they're going to be using. And it goes into deep details on that. So I really did like that. Um, it also talks about promoting reading, how we're supposed to read to our child um, for 30 minutes every day. And then it goes into the different things. Um, this year, we challenge each family to accomplish a goal of a thousand books. Um, and it just goes into different things on reading log, um, where do you get the books, any book count and all these different things, which I'm going to actually do the challenge and try to read a thousand books to Shania, um, this year to help her vocabulary. Shania struggles with speech. She, she knows words, but she doesn't say sentences. So I'm going to definitely work on that. And there's also the 20, um, 20... 324 um, calendar so they follow RCSD because it is an RCSD school but even though it's an RCSD school it's also a daycare so they had a pro their RCSD has a school within their daycare so they open at 7 30 and they close at 5 30 so there is after and before care that we can pay for um, but her school time is 8 30 to 2 30 and anything after we would have to pay for but they gave the whole calendar of all the holidays, all the days that they have half days for school, um, superintendent days, any um, testing days, which is not for preschool, but the whole entire calendar for the year and everything that we need to know for that year. So I found that very helpful as well, even though I knew the calendar because my husband, he works in our CSD, so I knew. So she'll follow his calendar, which works so I don't have to ha balance different calendars. Um, I thought this was really helpful. I did not look at this when I was there, but I did look at it before I started to make this video and it talks about the universal, um, pre-K parent guide and it just goes into the time, the communication. It talks about the dress attire and it says even in the winter, they'll still be going outside. So to make sure to have boots, hats, scarves, and gloves, and they prefer clothes that children could get messy with because they do a lot of, um what they said, science, art, learning activities, and messy projects. So they, I, which I'm going to show you guys in another video what I'm having her wear to school. Um, I got a lot of clothes that she can get messy and um, sneakers um, for footwear because they do a lot of um, running around. They don't really want too much jewelry and stuff like that. Um, it talks about... Um, Homework, if they have homework, I don't know if preschoolers have homework, they might, I don't know. Um, it talks about homework, how it's sent out. It talks about the birthdays and the special treats. So I didn't even, some of these questions that I asked the teacher were actually answered in the handbook, which is really, really great, but it goes into detail. Um, it talks about toys, it talks about meals. One thing I would say I like about it is, and the teacher told me about the meals too, they have an on-site chef. So it's not like they're using food link like RCSD does, which I found strange because usually RCSD uses food link. But um, because they're a wraparound daycare, they have their own chef. And she said they make homemade things every day. So I'm I'm really excited about that. She was like, we eat real oatmeal and real mac and cheese and real. So I, I like that part, you know. So she's told me I didn't have to because I asked her if I had to bring her lunch because I, you know, I was going to bring her lunch. Um, and she said, no, we have lunch, we have snacks, we have all of that. 
So this goes into detail about that. Um, they also have a uh, goes into details about attendance and absences and what we have to do. Um, it talks about medication, allergies, and medical alerts. And, you know, I did sign off on them to give her certain things, but not all things in terms of like Neostorin, A and D. I could, yeah, they can give her that. But there were some things like sunscreen and stuff like that where I didn't want them to give her. So I didn't like click off on that. Um, but um, it goes into deep details about um, illnesses, staff training, um, communication and procedures, medication, um, the winds, field trips, because I did ask about field trips. Um, oh, I did also sign you guys a paper for um, parent involvement for parents to come in the classroom. You could come in all these different days, different projects. I wish I, I, I took a picture of it. Um, it's in my phone, but I'm recording on my phone. <laughs> And it talks about the different things you can help with. So um, I did click off for that. I told them Monday and Fridays is when I'll be available and what I was available to do in this, that, and the third. Um, it talks about discipline here, guidelines for behavior, and the each steps that they're taking. Um, it talks about the individualized behavior management plan that they have, an interve um, intervention plan and assessments. Um, it talks about parents' concerns, grievance procedures, student assessments, um, parent-teacher conference, which will be held twice a year, um, which is I'm seeing here, parent involvement, um, um, parent contact information, major dates, and it just goes through the different classrooms who are the lead teachers, um, assistant, and they also have a flow assistant too for each class. So that is good as well. And it's very detailed. I mean, this is very, very detailed. I have not gone through it. I just skimmed through it before I did the video for you guys. But it's very, very, very detailed. So I'm excited about that. Um, overall, her experience in open house. So Shania got into it with someone at open house. Shania, she had no experience except her brother. And her brother just came about last year. So for two years of her life, um, you know, it was only her. It was only her. You know, she had no, she was born during COVID in 2020. So it's just her. Everything is her. So she plays by herself. She She's not used to playing with other children. So she's in the classroom. She's going around playing with toys by herself. And she had an encounter with a girl where the girl tried to take a toy from her and she took it back, you know, and the girl left her alone. But she had an encounter with a, a male, um, a, a boy, where he grabbed the ice cream cone from her, which is the only thing she was playing with the whole time, you know. And she grabbed it back and pushed him. And he kept coming at her, so she pushed him again and she pushed him down. And I was just like, oh, you know, let's, you know, stop, stop, stop. And my husband, he's like, well... Just let her have it. That's the only toy she's been playing with. Because my husband, she's Shania's tiny. And, you know, these a lot of the kids in there are bigger than her. And that was something that I do worry about because I don't want nobody to bully her. She's not a bully. She doesn't bully people. But when he, he grabbed it from her, the way he grabbed it with the force, she pushed him because I seen her. And I seen him. And he kept coming at her. And she really started getting upset. So... You know, that was my, the only little hiccup. You know, we got past it, you know. But, um, yeah, there was another um, thing that I didn't like. Um, uh, some of the kids were in there and the girl was saying, the young girl was saying, um, she started talking about guns. And she told some, some, oh, we're going to kill her first and then we're going to kill him and this, that, and the third. And I didn't like that. You know, I did not like the language that they were using to me for a three-year-old to be using that language. I don't understand why. And I don't, she's not exposed to that type of language because we don't talk like that at home. But I know with going to school, she's going to be exposed to different things. But, you know, I just, you know, wanted the teacher I didn't feel like the teacher really handled it well. Like, I feel like she just played like she was still talking to someone else. But the girl said it loud enough for her to hear. And my husband did say, like, no, that's let's not use that type of language, da 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 And her parents was very apologetic. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I you know, she just doesn't listen to me, da 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 And, um, you know, but I just, I don't want 
certain I'm just hoping that she's not exposed so young to so much yet, you know. But that was the only thing that was the hiccup to me that was really concerning because I'm like, you know, okay, are these kids going to start cursing? Is she going to come home and start cursing now? Like this, that, and the third. So that was the only thing, to be honest, that really, you know, bothered me a little bit. Uh, my husband handled it very well. Um, and I talked to some of the parents that were there. Um, they seem nice. You know, they seem like nice people. And I, I um, observed some of their children and they, you know, my, my daughter was interacting with them a little bit because she was more to herself. Um, and she, you know, it was overall, it was a good experience. I got all the information that I needed. Um, I am nervous to start, but I would say um, go with as much questions when you go in an open house, uh, my advice to you, go with as much questions as you want to ask. There's, I think I was the only one who asked as many questions as I did. I, I literally asked her over 15 questions. But it's just because, you know, I'm a new mom and I just, I just want to make sure my baby's okay. So that was the open house experience. After we left, um, I checked in with um, the lady at the desk and she gave us a snack and we went home. I think Shania liked the classroom, enjoyed it, it the experience other than that little hiccup. Um, so I'm excited to see how she does on Wednesday. And today's Friday. So I'm excited to see how she does on Wednesday. School starts on Wednesday officially. And um, I will let you guys know how it goes. And I love you guys so much. If you have any questions or any experience with your open house, let me know in the comments. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Mwah! Bye.